So let's take a look at another thing you should not do, which is use low-level error handling logic in your exception sections. Now, hopefully a lot of you have standards for the kind of code that you write in, and hopefully even more, has standards, really critical standards for error handling logic. But I found lots of organizations don't. They simply create an error log table, and they tell all the developers, write to this table if you have any problems, if you have to log an error. And here's an example of doing that. So here's a piece of code which, on the one hand, is really nice because it's completely self-documenting. And on the other hand, it's really horrible because it's completely self-documenting, which means that I'm showing you everything I'm doing. So the self-documenting part of it is that I can pretty much read this code. When I didn't find a match on the uh, company ID, I want to grab the error code and the error message, insert it into the log table. That's what the senior programmer on the team told me to do. We've got this error log table right into that table. And I'll create the error message. I'll store the error code, the name of the program, et cetera, et cetera. And what the documentation says that if, if you don't find a match for the company ID, it's not a big deal. So record the error, but don't stop the program from continuing. If you get a dupe valid index, that's more serious. And I need to raise a message back to the user saying that the company already exists. So I use raise application error. I put in my error number, and I'm done. And then if anything else goes wrong, oops, if anything else goes wrong, pretty much you do the same thing that I did up here. But now I have a generic error message, and I again hard code a various number of values. So I can explain very clearly what this code is doing, and that's a part of what makes it so incredibly horrible, because this kind of code only is good and only even acceptable if nothing ever changes. And of course, that's never true. Stuff is always changing. For example, when I upgrade to Oracle, Oracle 10G release 2 or higher, and I'm sure you're pretty much all on 10G R2, you want to take advantage of a fantastic new built-in called DBMS Utility Format Error Backtrace. This function should be called in every single error handling section because it will give you the line number on which the error was raised. Really great stuff. So what I really should do at this point, once I've upgraded my application to 10.2, is go back to my error log table, add another column to this table for the, uh, the backtrace, and then I'd have to go into every single insert statement in my application and add the call to the function, put it into the insert statement. It's crazy really impossible to maintain this sort of code. You should never expose this kind of logic. So don't do that. Don't call raise application error. Don't explicitly insert into your log table or write to a file or anything like that. Don't call all those useful built-in functions in each handler. In other words, I just told you about DBMesh utility format backtrace, but you shouldn't call that in every single handler. That kind of repetition, that redundancy is bad for productivity, and it's bad for the quality of your code, maintainability of your code. And what you need to do is create or use a generic shared error management utility. For example, if I don't find a match on company ID, I don't write an insert into my error log table. I call my quest error manager, register the error, pass in my override message if I want to, and I'm done. If anything else goes wrong, raise an unanticipated error. Pass in the company ID as part of a name value sequence so I can record those values and look at them later and try to support and recover from the error. But notice all the detailed code is gone. The Quest Error Manager, which by the way is a real freeware utility available at PL SQL Obsession, and I'll give you the link to that at the end of my presentation. So you can download and use this for free. But the basic idea is that these programs hide all the details. Is it writing to a table? Is it writing output to the screen? Is it writing it to a file? Actually, it could do any of those three and it's just depending on what the current state of that package is. It calls DB mesh utility format backtrace, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, so you don't have to do it yourself. So here's a great example of avoiding exposing your implementations, showing how you get the job done, even though it might seem like it's nice and self-documenting, but it's a maintenance nightmare, and instead you hide all the details behind one or more sub-programs in your package that do all the work for you. It's a variation on the insert thread, really, but it's to do this error management functionality. 